And speaking of guys betting on themselves, I think Solo Sokoa is betting on himself to be the next tribal chief from what it looks like. Because uh, after he unleashed the Samoan werewolf, Jacob Fatu, the following week, Paul Heyman denies him as the tribal chief. Then he has his cronies and Jacob Fatu specifically put Paul Heyman right through a table. Biggest pop he'd ever got. And it was at Madison Square Garden. Which is like a huge deal for wrestlers, I guess. In uh, listening to uh, all the guys who have podcasts speak on it. But yeah, I mean, you know, personally, like that, that, that was white hot right there. That was, you know, people are saying that that was like, that was the, that was basically the first bump that Heyman's taken in his whole career. And it just so happened to get the biggest pop of his career. And now everybody, myself included, present company included, wants Roman back. We need Roman back. But I think they're just they're they're letting they're letting the drama build a little more. Solo then cut a, a little vignette before Money in the Bank, which we'll get to in a moment. Cut a little vignette mafia style about wanting to take the WWE title back from Cody Rhodes. I mean, pretty sure Co- Cody's already squashed Solo <laughs> a couple times. Solo was taking a bunch of L's there after he beat John Cena. But uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. Like it's you never know where the storyline's gonna go. And then how is how's uh how's Big Dwayne gonna play in all this once Roman comes back and he has to he has to put Solo in his place. And there's still there's still Hikaloa, the big uh, six eight six seven six eight monster of the family. He's still gonna come around and. Uh, Zilla Fatu, I'm so excited for Zilla to debut because he's looking he's looking like he can do some of the stuff that Jacob can do already. But you know, he's a little he's a little pit bull, you know, Samoan, you know. That that's gonna be awesome. Why not bring him all in? Why not? It's family, right? Bloodline, mafia, the Samoan mafia, like why not, man? I think it's it's a hot angle, especially if you get if you if you can do that where you can just bring a bunch of guys in instant heat brand new heels because nobody's ever seen them before doing anything you can do that and then you know have instant heat on those guys and have people hate on them and just just grow and expand it you could have a bunch of the top baby faces going up against them you know and kind of like a sort of like an invasion thing but it's all happening in-house because it's the you know it's the Royal Samoan wrestling family. Like we run this shit now, you know, this is, this is our destiny, blah, blah, blah. blah. So <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's definitely like re-energizing the, the brand, the like, so good on, good on uh solo. He's, he's performed quite well. He hasn't broken. He's still pretty serious. So that's good, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited to see how far, like how, like not even the angles, but just like which of the family members they're gonna bring next, and when, and in what situation. It's, it's I like it. I like it. I like it when the you know you have good matches, but I like when the wrestling program has like a hot angle that can just go on for a while. This is like, this is ba- this is whole bloodline thing is basically like a, a two and a half, two and a half year angle that's still going. So it's crazy. It's nuts. I I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. So Hunter and everybody that's, uh, you know, working in the lab with Hunter in the, in the booking room. Awesome job guys. Although, you know, Hey, not not everything is uh, sunshine lollipops. I mean, I would like to see uh, L.A. Knight get put off ice and get some gold around his waist. He was he was like white hot for a little bit too, and then I knew I knew the match with Roman was gonna was gonna kill him, man. That was too much too soon. 
he should have been he should have been trying to get in the mix for like the the US title or the intercontinental title after like Gunther had lost it. He established a streak, he was gonna lose the title, whatever. Like I think he should have been to LA Knight, not fucking Sami Zayn. Like that 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 did nothing for Sami Zayn. Like that dude is still so mid to me right now, man. Him and Kevin Owens, man, with the fucking indie mark bullshit. Mid. I mean, I'm not in favor of giving it to Braun Breaker, obviously. But, like, you know, like I said, LA Knight is one of those guys that's deserving. Uh, who else can I think of that you could put the, the gold around? I mean... Orton, you know, obviously still in the mix. Um, uh, uh, you have the thing is, is you have you have like so many of the of the good top guys in the world championship mix. That it makes it hard. You basically have like you had four at Money in the Bank. You had four guys basically in on that world championship thing like getting in there please don't please do not turn that into a fatal four-way we need somebody else to step up against damian priest and then you know you have the thing with seth and drew and drew and punk and punk and seth like that 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 could go in circles for another year and a half but we need we need to like establish decent opponents like if we're not gonna if we're not gonna have guys like that in the mix then some some other guys need to be brought up or developed quick or something because a, a lot of a lot of the a lot of the top baby faces seem to be in the world title mix right now in the wwe and then and then the the i don't want to say lesser but the 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 sort of upper mid card, you know, titles. They don't have a lot of uh, baby faces in the mix for those because of the fact that, you know, they're all in the world title mix. So I don't know. Hunter's going to have to be looking for talent, develop talent, or just you know, put the put the right guys in place to succeed and give the fans what they want. But point being, let's get some gold. On L.A. Night. Yeah. Let's do that. And speaking of money in the bank. Before the uh, the brouhaha there. At the end with the referee. And did. Was Damian Pin And CM Punk. And Drew trying to cash in. And all that mayhem. Before all that happened. John Cena came out. And he surprised everybody. You know, he really, he must really like Toronto. Maybe, maybe he, uh, he drives his Honda Civic Type R from uh, Massachusetts to Toronto. Who knows? But he, you know, he, any, anytime they roll around Toronto, John Cena's usually been there pretty frequently. And, and Toronto loves him back, obviously. But, uh, with all that love and all that support, we're going to be wishing him well because, He's going to, he came out to announce, he came out to hype up the crowd and announce that, unfortunately, very unfortunately, because I like John Cena personally, he's going to be retiring with his last match coming at the next WrestleMania pay-per-view. So now that begs the question, who on the active roster could possibly be worthy enough to be in a retirement match with John Cena? That is something that I'll leave up to your guys' interpretation. I'll share my thoughts on that eventually. 